All right, welcome back to the modular inventory tutorial series. And now we're at part nine. So yeah, it took a bit longer to plan than I expected. More on that at the end of the video. For today, the first thing we'll do is a bit of improvement on the code, mostly because I found out that there is some memory leak in there. So yeah, that's that's kind of important. We'll add the ability to save and load the game. So you'll be able to save the content of your inventory, the position of the player, uh, the settings also. And then we'll be able to calculate the total stats of the equipped item on the player. So that's going to be interesting. All right, so let's start with the small improvements. So first, since the inventory manager is always available now, we can use the function directly instead of using signals. So like here in the floor items, this sends a signal to let know that the item has been picked. Then the inventory manager check if it can be picked. If it can, it will call back this one with item picked, then it will queue free itself. But now we can directly call the inventory manager and check if we have enough space and queue free if we do. But now we can directly call the inventory manager. So let's do that. We'll call the inventory manager. We'll check if it has space for items. And here we'll send the items, but we'll get the data because the has space for items will generate its own copy of the item. So it's not, it, it doesn't use the original one and in which inventory group we want to search. And then if we have enough space, then add them and then you can queue free. You can remove the little bag from the world. Then item picked is not used anymore and we can remove all up to interact because when we'll interact, we'll pick up the item. Now let's go to the next one. It's going to be the inventory manager. So inventory manager. So in here, we'll remove item picked. So the signal here, remove that. And we can remove also the function at the bottom on item pick delete there. And now we can go in the signal manager. Also, if I control click this one, this item picked here can be removed interactable. All right, let's go back in inventory manager. Let's go to the top. The ready function, I added a check here because the hotbar does not have that signal content change and to prevent the equipment panel from connecting twice if it's already connected. We can put it directly in the inventory. So I'll copy this part, then I'll remove all of that. Then I'll go in the inventory and here at the end, I'll connect content changed on inventory manager and save that. Then if we go back in the inventory manager, all of those slot signal connection, we can remove it and bring those directly inside the inventory slot. So each slot will connect their own signal. Copy that and we can remove all of this. So once we're in inventory slot in the ready function at the end, we can simply connect those signals. Then we'll change slot and here instead of slot, it's going to be self, self, self here. And the self in the middle will be the inventory manager. So inventory manager. All right. So yeah, once the inventory slot is ready, it will connect its own signal. And then for the hotbar, hotbar GD, uh, the inventory ready can be removed. It was mostly to connect the signal on the slots because this is not extending the inventory. Uh, while we're here, we can always change this for the get instance. So I'll get instance and hotbar slot in the quotes. So it's going to use a function instead of the path. All right. Next little improvements is going to be back in the inventory manager, the add item. So if we go at the bottom, there's add item. And here there's kind of two loops. So for each item, if it's a stackable item, then for each inventory, we try to stack to, to add the item to a stack. But the thing is, add item itself is also going to call add stack. So it's going to do it twice. So yeah, that means that we can completely remove this part and lower it. So then let's go in the inventory. Let's find the add item. And the add stack item is outside, but we can just bring it back in here. So we'll bring all of this, cut it, and put it on top here. So yeah, if the item is stackable, then we'll try to place it. Then if the item is done, just go back and add stack item, remove that. So that should be good. All right, now when my scripts get bigger, I like to add some kind of comments header to separate the different section. This is up to you and your code taste. But what I like to do is 
like the signals here, I like to have a little headers, signals, this here, inventory uh, resources, that could be changed to use the resource manager instead. So let's cut that. Let's bring that in the resource manager. We have the TSCN at a comma and paste that one here. It's just going to be inventory slot in quotes, preload that. Uh, oh yeah, this needs to be semicolon, just like that. So inventory slot is going to be in the TSCN here and we'll be able to get it with the get instance. So back here, let's remove that. And now the inventory slot that we're using here, we'll just do the resource manager dot get instance and in quotes inventory slot. And there you go. So yeah, we have the signals and then this is the exports, exports variable. Yeah, and those are, again, just up to you. You can have more, you can have less. Those are the simple variables. Then after my variables, I like to have my setter. So setters. But the thing is the setters for here is the function here. I only have one, it's the size. So set inventory size. So I'll bring this one up to my setters. And then the ready function is a built-in function. So built-in, uh, there's the, the process or physics process that are built in. There's a few more. Well, I'll, I'll like to keep them here. And then after that, I'll place my functions. So the normal function that I use inside. And at the end, there's the signal connection, the, the signal that I'm connected to. So signal connections. So I'll do that for the inventory manager too. So this one, they're a bit mixed because here I have the GUI input slot and the mouse entered and stuff like that. So I'll have to move them down. Let's do those exports variables built in the built in. I have the input, so I'll put that one here. Then I want my functions and all of those are signals connection. So I'll cut those from here and bring them to the bottom of the page. So yeah, up to there, cut that go at the bottom on inventory content change. Let's paste that. So just over on stack splitted, the first connection there, I'm going to put my little comment. That's the last one. All right. So now let's talk about the big problem, the memory leak, because I made the inventory and item as nodes, they need to be freed correctly. You need to call Q free if they're not referenced anywhere or else uh, they're going to cause a memory leak. Like I have here. So they're not freed correctly and they pile up behind. They become orphan nodes. If they would be resources, as soon as they're, as they're not referenced by anything, they're going to be freed automatically. So I'll fix the leakage and I'll probably try to refactor this system to separate the UI and data, but that's going to be for another time. For now, let's take a look at that. So if we go in the debugger tab at the bottom and we go in the monitors, here we can see the orphan nodes. So if we go lower, Orphan nodes here, I can orphan nodes. If I start the game and now, as we can see the orphan nodes, I have 124. The thing is, they're not bad if they're not changing, if you don't accumulate them. So let's say I go to a chest and I open it. My orphan nodes count goes down to, to 86. If I close the chest, they go back up to 134. If I open it back up again, 86, close it 134. So they stay at the same amount. And you can also see it in the graph here. So they're not, I, I'm not getting more of them. So it's not too bad. It's not, they're not piling up. Each of the chests are doing that. But if the count goes up there, there, we will get a problem. Now, 143, open it, close it, 143. So, okay. The thing is with the infinite loot. So if I open this one, each time I open it, it will generate an item. I don't free it from memory. If I want to spam the open key, the number of orphan node will go up super fast. So that, yeah, those one are piling up in the memory. So that's a problem. Let's go through the code and make sure we free those correctly. So first thing, I'm going to add the orphan node in the tree. So in my inventory manager, I'm going to add a control node that'll put the inventory panel from the chest inside while they're not open. So I'll go in the inventory manager. I'll add a child node here, just a control node. I'll put it at the top. I'll call that hidden nodes. And then I'll go in the rec and position. I'll do something like 5,000 and 5,000. So it's going to be super far away. It's not going to be visible. Or you could also leave them there and hide them, but it's just going to be one less step. So then we'll go in the inventory manager and add this node. 
let's go at the top. So here with all the other exports, we'll export hidden nodes, which is going to be a control. So let's click on the inventory, assign the hidden node, hidden nodes, all right? Then if we go at the bottom, just before the signals here, we'll add two functions. So we'll have the add hidden node and remove hidden node, which will only add it as a child or remove. Pretty simple. So now if we go in the floor item here, we do create an item at the start, but since it's not in the tree, it's only going to be in the tree when you pick it up. So right now it's an orphan node. So what we'll do is we'll add it to the hidden node. Inventory manager, add hidden node, this item. And then when we interact with the bag, we want to remove it. Remove. Inventory manager, remove hidden node, item. And then let's take a look at the interactable chest. Here again, we have another resource that we're loading. This one, we can change it to use the resource manager too. So inventory is equal to resource. Resource manager, get instance of inventory. This one will move it to the resource manager, remove all of that. Let's go to the TSCN list and add it there. Inventory in quotes, semicolon, and that's it. So back to the interactable chest. When the chest is ready, we'll add the inventory to the hidden nodes. Inventory manager, add hidden nodes. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. We'll remove it when the inventory is opened in the inventory container. But just with that, if we start the game, we can already see that the orphan nodes are down to 12. Yeah. So that's that's a nice improvement. So let's see where those 12 other come from. And also for the floor item, we need to go on the unvoid UI input. So that's when we drop the bag. We need to remove it from the hand before we create the bag. So then when the bag is created, the item will be placed in the hidden node. And now let's take a look at the treasure chest. The problem is every time we open it, we put null to remove the old item but the thing is we don't free it so here we'll get var old item is equal to put item because the result of the put item it will return what's in there if there is something so if old item then old item dot q free will remove it completely so now the treasure chest can be open as much as you want now that's one place that we didn't free the item, but there's a few other place too. So if we go in the inventory slot, the remove item all the way at the bottom, we put item null. We need to get this. So old item. And if we have something, we queue free. Then we have another one of those in the item itself. So item GD. When we call destroy. So when we destroy the item, we just call the item slot and ask it to remove the item. But the thing is, if it's not in a slot, then we just need to do a else Q free. So yeah, it will just remove itself. That's it. Then we have another one in the inventory itself where we do the try place stack item. If we can place the item in the stack, then we remove it. But we need to clear it. So what we'll do here, we'll get a temporary variable so items I. And after we removed it, we'll temp dot q free and we have the same thing just below here with the accept item so we can pretty much copy this and paste it there the temporary item remove it and then free it and then just below we have remove item quantity which here sets the item to null but we also need to q free it so this one we can simply duplicate the line dot q free so there shouldn't be any problem here and yet when we change the quantity of the item the item itself will change its quantity. If it's depleted, it will send its signals and everything should be fine. So those one were not too hard to find, but there is one that I had a pretty hard time to find and it is the usable item. So if I go in the item script, in the initialize function, since the item is not ready, anything that I add, if I do add child, those one are not added yet to the item itself. They're kind of waiting to be in the tree. So they might stay in memory after. So if the item is freed before it gets ready. Yeah, that, that one was a bit hard to find out. But yeah, to fix this one, what I'll do is I'll keep the data. So item data. And when I get it from here, I'll do item data is equal to data. And I'll move the usable, setting the usable component in the ready function. Anyway, you can only use the item if it's 
in your inventory, so it must be ready. So if item data has usable, uh, I'll put it at the bottom, then item data. So that should fix that problem. Uh, now let's go in the inventory, because since the inventory is in the hidden node, when we want to open it and close it, we need to put it back or remove it from there. So the open function will check if it's already open, is open, then return. If it's already open, you don't need to do anything, then it's going to be open. And after that, the inventory manager remove hidden nodes cell, and it's going to be added to the inventory container. And when we close the inventory, we'll do the same. So if not is open, return, then we set it to false. Then here, when we close it, we need to remove it from where it is and put it in the hidden nodes. So what we can do is just get its parent and remove child itself. So it will remove it from anywhere it is. Then we can call the inventory manager and add it to the hidden node. So that's good. Just one last thing in the inventory container, we remove child here. We can remove that line on inventory close because when we call inventory close, it's going to do the, the, the stuff. And here, instead of doing inventory dot is open, we'll call open and there. So that should be good. Let's take a look at how many orphan nodes we have in the game now. So for now, we have zero orphan nodes. It's pretty good. If we open the chest, we can move around the items, pick up my helmet, pick up my coins. All right, everything is good. The cooldown works again. We can split the items. Everything is good. Let's take a look at the uh, treasure chest. And if I spam the button, I don't see any orphan node appearing. So that looks pretty good. Now uh, let's add the ability to save and load the game. So I'll start by moving the data folder because it's not tied to the items anymore. There's a lot of stuff in here and I'll place it just in the root in here. I'll add a new folder for the JSON file. Let's open in file manager and I'll move all the JSON file in there. So that's good. And I'll create a new resource folder for a later. I'll create three new resource script. First, it's going to be the game data that will contain all the data of the game. So let's do a new script. I'll call it game data. I can choose no comments, create that. Let's open it. It will extend resource. Let's do the class name game data. This script will have two other resources. So the setting data and the player data, which are resources, which we'll create also right now. So let's create a new script settings data create. So let's open that one. And for this one, we'll have the class name settings data. It's going to be a resource too. And we'll have a Boolean for the full screen and a float for the scale, which is what we have now. And that's going to be the resource we use to save the, the data. We're not going to save the resources, but we're going to use it. So the data is the same everywhere, because if I give this script to the setting UI and I use it in the Sage Manager that we'll be creating later, then they will share the same data without having to use signals and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. So now let's create the next one, the player data, new script, player data, create, open that one, class name, player data, extend resource, we'll save the position of the player. And I gave him a default position, we'll save the content of the inventories later. Since this resource file will be shared between other nodes, what I'll do is I'll go in my resources folder and I'll make sure that those are saved. And here I can do right click new resource. And here I can pick my game data, game data resource. And I'll call it the same name game data. So I got this one and here in the inspector, I can see that I have the settings data and the player data. It's waiting for a resource. So what I'm going to do is create also player data. I'm going to call it player data also. So save that one. So now I can click my game data and drag my player data in there. So player data is here. Do the settings here, settings data. So this one create, I'll do the same settings data, save that. Let's go in my game data and drag this one in settings data. That's done. So for the player data, you have your global position. You can modify it. It's going to modify the starting position and the inventories. You could set data in here already if you follow the, the, the correct structure and you could start your game with default item and the settings data. 
by default it will start full screen and with a scale of one so pretty simple now let's give those to the nodes that will use it so if i look for the player it's the troll troll gd i'll export a resource to our player data and that's going to be the same player data that i just made so then if i open my scene the troll scene i'll get the player data and I'll drag the TRES, the, the resource file, here. So now it's the same file. And there's going to be the player inventory. We'll also have that. So if I go in the script, inventory player is going to have the player data. And then if I click, click on it, I can give it the same file. Player data TRES and put it there. All right. Now let's do the same for the settings. So the settings will go to the settings manager. Settings manager. But this one is a auto load script. So to get it, I'm just going to go in the ready function, load it from there. So I'll add the variable of our settings data, which is a type settings data. Then I'll set it here. Settings data is equal to preload. Here I can give it the path of my resource file, and it, which is the settings data TRES. I can just drag it here, and there you go. The last one is the settings UI which is this one, settings DSCN. Let's go in the script. I'll do the export again. Export resource var settings data. And if I save it, I can set it in the inspector right there. So settings data, yes, put that there. And there you go. Now let's go in the manager folder and let's create the save manager. So new script, save manager. Let's open it. So this one, it will have the game data resource file. This one will also be a auto load, so it's going to be loaded on ready var game data of type game data. So then function ready, let's preload game data is equal to preload. And then let's get the game data TRES, put that there and we're good. And then here we'll need the location of the save folder and save file. So I'll put that here. Save folder is going to be in user. You cannot use the resource folder because this is for the game files when it's built and the user will be a folder on the player's computer that is accessible for, for writing stuff in there and you have your save file here so then in here we'll have the save and load function so let's do that i'll start with the load game so function load game the first thing we need to do is prepare a file object for file is equal a file dot new then we'll prepare the file path var save path is going to be equal the, the two of the name above. So save folder plus save file. And then if the file exists, so if file dot file exists, uh, we'll give it the path, save path. So if this file exists, then we'll try to open it to read it. File dot open the save path and we'll open it as read file read we'll get the data inside so var data will be equal to file dot get var in the file we will save a variable and we won't save the resource file itself so here we just say get the variable in there and true if you want to know what the true means you can always control click the the function and it will bring you here so allow objects boolean is false by default if you put true you can save objects in there so back here let's close the file file dot close and then let's check if the data is correct so if data is not null then we'll set the data in the game data game data dot set data that's a function we'll add later to load the data everywhere so all the nodes that are using the resource file either player settings or game data will get updated they will get the new data and then that's it for this one let's do function save data we'll first call a signal so we'll call the signal manager and emit signal and this one will be saving game this is mostly for the inventory it's a signal to say to anyone that is listening to prepare their save data so for the case of the inventory it's going to be preparing the data once we saved it again. So yeah, after that, our directory. So directory is equal to a new directory. And then we'll do if not directory dot dir exists. So if the folder, the save folder doesn't doesn't exist, save folder, we'll create it. Uh, let, let, let's go down 
let's make some place directory dot make directory recursive the safe path so that's mostly if your save path is longer it will create all the folder up to the end of that path then let's do the file so we'll need a file here too so our file is a new file then we'll get the safe path we can get the same thing as above then we need to open the file for writing file dot open the save path and now we'll open it as write and now that the file is open in write mode we can write our data so file dot store var so we'll store one variable in there and it's going to be a big dictionary containing all the data game data dot get data so that's a function we'll create just after and the game data resource will give us a dictionary containing all the data and then here we can do true and then we can close the file and that should be good for the file now let's do the set data and get data but only to save and load the player position so we'll know if everything works well and after that we'll do the rest so let's go in the troll and now that we have the player data here we'll go in the physics process so when the player moves we'll do if the player data is set that's because if the troll gets initialized and it doesn't have it we don't want it to crash if there is player data set the global position in the data to the global position of the troll pretty pretty simple then at the top in the ready function we'll connect the signal to know when the data changes so when we load the game we'll just set the data and send a signal player data connect changed so that's a built-in signal on the resource each resources have that signal so if the player data emit that signal we'll go in the function on data change and we'll set the the new data so which in this case will be the global position so if we go at the bottom function on data change the only thing we'll do here is global position is equal to the player data and then at the top i'm gonna call it so when the game starts it's gonna put the default position in the player but you must also keep in mind that the player position might be dependent on which level you're playing in or something like that so that depends on your game you might not want to save the player position but if you do you can do that since i don't have a lot of data to save i'm getting what i can so now let's go in the data in the the script of the the resource and we'll add the set and get data so for the set data it's going to be just that then the player data will call its own set data with the player data in that the data here is a dictionary because if i do the get data will return a dictionary with player data as the key and the value will be the player data dot get data so that's good let's go in the player data script so we have the global position the inventories let's do the get and set so set data we'll set the global position in here we'll set it from the data we get from the file and then get data will return global position as a key in the dictionary with global position as the value so if we go back in the save manager we'll save get data so it's going to be just a big dictionary with all the data in there and then when we load it we'll call the game well yeah here we set data but we i forgot to to add the data in here so we set the data with the data that we got from the file here get variable so now we need to put the save manager in the auto load list so project project settings auto load and the path let's go in managers save manager double click this save manager in capitals add and then close this now if we want to try that we need to be able to call the load and save so in my main scene if i go in 2d i have one button now settings I'll add a quit button so it's easier to quit and I'll add the save and load buttons just below. So now if I select the quit, let's go in node, press, connect, UI container on quit press, connect that. So that's good. Uh, when you quit the game, you can simply do get three, quit, pretty simple. Let's go save, press, connect, unsave, press, connect that. This one will do save manager dot save data. Oh, well, uh, yeah, it's called save data, but I meant to call it save game. So let's rename that. Uh, sorry about that. Let's go back to the UI container. So it's going to be save game. Then let's do the load press. I can double click this, connect, unload, press. I'll 
do pretty much the same call this except it's gonna be load let's see if this works so if i start the game oh oh yeah i forgot because i changed the path of the json file and now they're not finding it so at the top here item path item data it's not that anymore so what i can do is just right click the json folder copy path then i'll take all of this and control v so that's the, the correct path there we go all the data json and items affixes and stuff and there's also the resource manager that is using two path here for the stats and for the recipe now if we try that all right we're in the game so if i move away let's come here next to the pillar and save the game and i forgot to add the signal saving game so let's do that with signal manager i'll go at the bottom here and i'll add the signal for the save manager manager signal saving game so now try it let's go next to the pillar and save game that's good and now if i go away and load it doesn't work yeah if i go back in my player data one last thing is to add the signal emit change i forgot that this will tell the player that the data has been loaded so now if we try that go next to this pillar and save the game now if i go away and load i get teleported back to the pillar all right now let's add all the rest so so back in the game data i'm gonna have to add the settings i'll have the settings i'll set the data from what i get i'll emit the change signal so if you have a node that is using this one it, it will be able to update its data and the get data we'll just add the settings in here now let's go in settings data we'll just set the two functions so we have set data which will get the dictionary basically the data that it's going to receive is this it's going to be a dictionary containing full screen it's going to be the value that was saved here then the scale is going to be there and then we emit change to let know everyone that this data has been loaded now let's go in player data and let's add the inventory to those so inventories and inventories so i'll start by the simple settings so in the settings gd script from the the ui so in the ready function here i'll just connect the signal settings connect changed self so we'll connect the changed signal to the on data changed and it will create that function data changed and this will contain the full screen check that we can remove from here and instead of getting it from the settings manager we'll get it from the settings data so settings data dot full screen and now we'll get also the the position of the scale so the scale slider dot value is going to be equal to settings data dot scale so if you modify your scale save the data modify it again and load it it's going to be applied now we need to go into settings manager and in here the scale will be equal to the settings data dot scale and then instead of getting this os full screen we'll get the settings data full screen and then when we set those here we'll set it in the data so full screen we can pick this one is going to be equal to value and the scale we can put it at the end here is equal to value there you go and then here we need to connect to the unchanged signal on the settings data change on data change and then when the data change here function set full screen to the settings data full screen and then we'll set scale to the settings data scale so if we start the game if i go in the game i can open my settings window let's go to half size you can change the full screen and then if i save now i can uncheck full screen i can make it super big and then if i load it's going to bring back the settings like they were so that's pretty cool and now let's go in the save manager so in the ready here now, normally in your game, I don't think you would start directly in your, your, your game, but here you could just load the game. Oh, and in the settings, GD, I need to call the undata change. So it's it's going to be set on ready too. Now with the load here, if I start, everything should start where I saved it. So if I go away next to the pillar here and save that, my settings were, were already saved, put them a bit bigger and save it again, quit, start again. And now I'm next to the pillar with my big inventory. So that's pretty good. Put it back down. But yeah, normally in your game, I don't think you would load right away. Probably that you would have a function to know if you're, if there's a save file that already exists. Probably something like this. So has save file. 
uh, it's just gonna check if the file exists or if the save exists. So now with this on the main menu, you can show the continue button and you could probably here load data have a parameter like a number to the file and have multiple save file data. So that's something. But if you do that, I guess you would need to probably save the settings in a different file. So the settings is not saved with each level and have a folder for all the different character of the of the player or something like that. That's just a basic save manager. Now let's do the inventory. That's probably the most important. So let's go in the inventory player. We'll add. So uh, we'll connect to the saving game from the signal manager that comes from the save manager. We could put the signal in the save manager. Yeah, could work too. Uh, then it will call a function on saving game. Then when the player data is loaded, we'll just get it from the resource and on change data. Let's create those functions. Well, let's make some place at the bottom here. So we have our unchanged data and the unsaving game. Let's start with the unsaving game. This one will just get the player data. Then in the inventory, we'll add a new key to the dictionary, which will be equipment. And this will be equal to the equipment dot get data. So that's a function we'll add to the inventory. So it will be able to be used by anything that inherits from the inventory. Let's create it for the two other inventory left, inventory right. So it's the right pocket. That's it. Now let's go in the inventory. I'll go at the bottom. Let's add some place. I'll put the get data here. So we'll start by creating a empty data for each slot in the inventory. We'll check if there's an item in it. But here we will be getting the index of the slot. So in the data, the key will be the index. So if there's an item, we'll save it at this index. When we load, we can put it at the same place. So then we get the slot, we get the item, and we call get data on the item. So let's go on the item and add the get data. We already have the get data, but now it's going to be getting a bit bigger because we want to get all the data, everything we need to know about this item. So if I replace that with this one, so get data, we'll still have the ID and the quantity. But now we'll have the item name because of the rare name. Since the rare name is set when the rarity is rolled, the rarity will be saved. And then we'll create an empty dictionary for the components. And then for each component, uh, we'll check if it has the, the, the method get data. Because like the healing item or the usable item, they are components, but we don't need to save anything in there because they're always the same. And yeah, it will be built from the ID. So this is only the data that we want to keep that has been generated when the item has been made or something like that. This component can be just with dot like that because we know that components is in here. We just created it. And at the end, we return the data for this item, the complete data. Which component needs get data? Well, that's mostly the, the stats that you roll, the stat range and stuff like that. So the first one will be the affix item GD. We'll have, we have set info. Let's add get data. We simply return the affix group ID, the affix ID and the scale. And then when we load the data, we'll be able to get the same item. And that's pretty good because if you modify any of the affixes in your JSON file, they will be modified here too. The scale will be the same. Removing something that exists might, might be a problem, but it's doable. Then let's go in base stat. So base stat. This one is only the scale because that's the only value that we want to keep. The value between 0 and 1. Because if you roll a perfect item, you want to keep it. So return the scale. That's it. And the next one will be item affix list. So item affix list. And this one will get data here. Get data. So we'll start with the empty array. And for each affixes, we'll get the data from there. And this one, we just did it earlier. So affix item, we get the data here and then we return it. And the last one is the item unique stats. Yeah, that's the one item unique stats. This one will get one too. get data. So it looks like the other one will start an array of scales. And then for each of those, add its scale value and return that. Now, if we go back to the inventory player, that was the get data. So normally we should be getting all the data for, for all the inventories 
we'll see if I forgot something when we try it. Let's do the loading, so unchanged data. So this one is pretty simple. We'll check if there is anything saved in the inventory, just, just because when you have the default save, there's nothing here. So if there is something, then try to load it. We'll call all the three inventories and set the data. So then let's go in the inventory and complete the set data inventory. We have the get data. Let's make some place and add the next one. So this one is a bit more simple. So for each slot in the inventory, we'll remove anything that is already there. And we need to queue free the old item so we don't get any orphan nodes. And then if the data has something in that slots, then we'll set it. So slots at that position, put the item, get item from data. So that function will have to update it in the item manager, but yeah, it will create the item from the data that we have saved. It's, it's like what we had before with the quantity, but now there is a lot more. So let's go there, get item from data. So yeah, we get the item, we set its quantity and we return the item. If the item data has a name, we'll set it. If it has a rarity, we'll set it. If uh, it has components, we will set the components. So here it's, if the data has base stat, that means that we have a scale for the base stat. So the item, the components that has been created with, with the get item, we know that it's there. So the base stat, the scale will be equal to the data that is in the data components base stat. That's it. Then the affix list will get its affix list and then we'll create a new one with what we have here. So that's the, the group ID and stuff like that. And then we'll get, give it the rarity, which will generate everything back. Then the unique, it's just that we need to separate the role unique a bit. If we go lower at the bottom, we have a role unique. So right there, role unique. And it's this little part there that we need to cut from it. So what we'll do is just go a bit lower and start a new function, set unique. So yeah, if you get a unique item, you want to be able to save it. And it's going to get the item and the scale. And here, the role unique, I'll just set unique with the same thing. So the item and the scale. So that's when it's freshly rolled, freshly generated. And this is when you load it from save or from data that you want. If you want to, maybe you complete a quest and player will get a perfect unique item that, that could do it that way. So then if we go back up, that's pretty much it for the get item from data. So let's see if that works. So if we start the game, let's go and pick up some stuff. Let's pick up the gold coin, the helmet. We could try to upgrade it. So now it's a magic helmet. Let's get this offhand, bring some items inside. I guess I could go in the other chest and get sword. Uh, I guess we could upgrade that if we can. Mm, it got the, the helmet. Let's get another one. We have a wooden sword of greed and the much ornament. Now, if we close this, oh, well, we crash to this close function. And I guess that's because when we close the inventory in the inventory container, we don't remove the child. It's going to be dealt within the close function itself. So yeah, now let's save it. Let's try again. Okay. So I filled my inventory. I have my helmet here. I have my shield, shield of the Templar. Let's upgrade. So yeah, vigorous helmet of greed. And then I have the fake device. Okay. I have the crystal orb of Gortic here. So now I'll be able to test with the unique. Also, this is usable. This is usable. Let's drink a potion. And now if I save my data, now I should be able to move everything around. Let's swap this shield for that. And I could use this upgrade kit. And then if I load, everything goes back to where it was. Seems to be working. Now, the thing is, yeah, if you drop your stuff on the ground and then load, then you get your stuff back, but the stuff on the ground is still there. So this is up to you in your game. Probably that in the save game, you would need to add something to know which item has been picked or something like that. And also most of the time you will only load once when you start the game. I don't think you will load during the level, but yeah, if you can just know that you may need to keep in your save file, which item has been picked, but yeah, that's a, that's a detail. But for now, it's just fun. You can get free gold. All right. Now I have a nice sword. All right. 
So that should be it for the saving and loading the data. Now let's do the stat calculation. So if I go in my stats JSON file, so let's go in data JSON, let's open in file manager, let's go in my stats. I want to add a property to the stats, which is affected by, so then I can have a dictionary of other stats, which would affect this one. So here I have all stats. So I'd like that all stats would affect the base stats. So this one would affect vitality by one point. So if you get all stats, then one point of all stat will give you one point of vitality. So this I'll add it to strength, I'll add it to the intelligence and dexterity. Then I'll add a new stat, which will be move speed. There you go. So move speed, when it's going to be displayed, if you get that on your on one of your gear, it could be plus something to your movement speed, and it's going to be affected by the dexterity. So I need to put that in capital letters. All right. And it's going to give me 10 points in movement speed. So dexterity will give me 10 points in move speed. That's how you need to see it. Let's save that. All right, we can go back to the game. Let's go in the player data. And here we'll add the base stat. So what the player will start with. I'll have five strength, five dexterity, vitality, intelligence, and I'll start with, uh, let's give it a bit more. Let's do 150 move speed. Then now I can add the function get stat. So I'll put that right here, get stat. We'll get here what stat we want to know the quantity. So it could be strength, dexterity, etc. So we start the total at zero. Then we check base stat if it has this one, because that could be a magic find, it could be defense or something. And if it's not in here, you just start at zero. So right now, if you get strength, it would be five. So it will increase the total by five. Then we'll need to go in the inventory manager and get the inventories from group and we'll ask for equipment. And this will need to create it. So yeah, maybe you, you, you might have multiple in, uh, equipment inventories. Maybe if you have side panel, so each side panel could be an equipment. And then for each of those equipment inventories, we'll get the total stats from them and we'll add it here. And then we'll get the information of the stat, the info that we have, the one that we just set in the JSON file. And we'll check, is this stat has affected by? If it does, then for each, we will calculate that stat and multiply it. So we'll get the main stat. So in our case, if I get strength, it's going to go and take a look and get the stat, all stats, and then multiply that with the value that we set in affected by. And in the case of move speed, move speed will go and get dexterity. Then get dexterity will come here and get all stats. And then it, it's going to go back. So it can create a chain. Just try not to have any loop in there because it can create an infinite loop. So if your all stat is giving you luck and then luck is giving you all stat, uh, even if it's a small quantity, it's going to loop infinitely. So there, there's that. And at the end, we just return the total stat. We round it integer. That's up to you. If your game allows floating number, you can leave it there. So let's start at the top. Get inventory from group equipment. Let's do this. Let's go into inventory manager. And at some point we add inventory to group. And since we already have a bunch of array, which are already grouped, we can simply return inventory groups with that ID. Pretty simple. Now we need to go in the player inventory at the top here. When we add inventory to group, we just need to add the equipment to equipment. If you would have another panel or something, you could add it here too. save that. So then we get the inventories. Now here we get stat from the inventory, but since we only get the stats from equipment, we could set the get stat on the equipment itself. So if we go to equipment, equipment GD, we could set the get stat here. If you want to get the stats from the normal inventory, you can just put this exact function in the inventory script. So it's simply that. So we, which stat do you want to get? We start with the total and then for each slots, just call the slots.getStat and we're good. And yeah, if you want to be able to get the stats from the normal inventory, you can simply just put this one in inventory, maybe for charms or something, but yeah, you might want to put some checks or something. So you don't count the stats of the other equipment in the inventory, but yeah, 
So that's why I, I leave it here, just to, just to be sure. So then let's go in the equipment slot. So equipment slot at the bottom here, get stat. You get the stat of the item, if there's an item. Else, well, you return zero. There's no, nothing here. So now let's go on the item and add get stat. So here we start with the total. Uh, we check for each component. And then if the component has the method get stat, then we'll just call it get stat. Not every component has that. And you could create special components. So yeah, it's all up to you in here. But for this part, we have base stat. Let's find that base stats. We'll get the total. Then for each stat range, just get value. And that's the same get value that we're already calling right there uh, for displaying the stats on the, the item. Then it's going to be item ethics list. And there we go. Total. It's pretty much, they're, they're, they're pretty much all looking like the same thing. So total uh, for each affix item in the affixes, uh, for each stat range in there, get, get give me your value from the scale and the stat. and add it to the total and then return the total. Pretty simple stuff. Next one, it's going to be the unique item. Get stat total again for each stat scale. Get the stats from this. And yeah, the next one is stat scale. So stat scale, get stat. This one is simply give me your value and that's it. So now that should be working already. Save that. Let's see if we can test that. So we'll go in the troll script the player script we do have the motion speed here which is 160 pixel per second we'll just remove that and then it's going to tell me you don't have move speed so what we'll do is player data dot get stat and we want game enums we will have to add that game enums that's that and it's going to be move speed so let's add this to the list so control click stat we're coming here move speed save that so what this is going to do is it's going to calculate the move speed. Now you might say that this is going to calculate every process frame. So maybe you could cache the result of that. Maybe in a timer, calculate that every second or something instead of every frame. You could improve like this. I always keep the optimization part at the end of my game dev. When I'm ready to release it or something like that, I'll, I'll try to find place to improve, you could cache this value probably. But for now, it's going to work pretty well. So yeah, here I'm just going to go in my item file just to change some items to be using dexterity so I can test that uh, data. Jason, let's open it. file manager. Let's open the items. Let's say the crystal orb of Gorkik is going to give me all stats and maybe not 25, but maybe let's say between 10 and 20. That might be a lot, but yeah, just for testing. And let's say that the t-shirt, maybe t-shirt is going to give me instead of defense, or oh, it could give me both. So it's going to give me def defense and dexterity, and it's going to give me between three and six. So save that. We can close it. Now, if we start the game, so I already have the orb of Gorkik in my save file and the stats is already changed. And since it's what it was already generated, I, or, uh, yeah, I already have the all stats plus 15, so it's not too bad. So now if I try to move, okay, I go at that speed. If I try to equip that, I go a lot faster. Oh, yeah. Now let's see if I can find a t-shirt in there. Okay, I got a t-shirt with three dexterity. Not that much, but it's going to give me a bit more speed. Pretty cool. Now let's save the game. All right, so that's working. But now let's just get a little panel to see what's the current stat. I'm not, I'm not going to do all of them, but just, just a few. You'll be able to do the rest. So I'll start with the window. Window TSCN, just create a new inherited scene. Let's focus on that. Let's change this name for player stats. Uh, let's save it. I'll save that in the UI player stats window. So I'll add a list a VBox container. Uh, in that, I'm going to add a HBox container. Then in here, I'll add a label. Well, I'm going to get the label from somewhere else. So merge from scene. Let's go in inventory, the inventory TSCN. Let's get the label. All right, then let's get this label. 
let's call it strength all right then i'll make it align uh, left and i'll make it size flag expand horizontal then i'll duplicate this one then the next one i'll do align right and that's going to be the quantity so let's say start at zero that's one so that's going to be str for strength duplicate that let's do dexterity load it there duplicate that one uh now let's do intelligence the first label in there int duplicate and the last one will be vitality all right let's change the spacing between those just a detail let's make this window smaller and i guess i could change the name title label stats with that pretty much it yeah like that save this now if i go and remove the script and add a new one player stats window yeah create in here i'll export some variable node path and i'll get the label for those value all right so all of them are here let's set those in the inspector so label strength gonna be the label two label dexterity intelligence and vitality oh well i could add the move speed just to know what it is so let's add uh m s p speed i guess move speed so then let's go back in the script let's add another one here uh, label move speed let's set it which is going to be this one all right save that. then the next thing is the player data so i need to set my player data resource here go in my resources player data drag that in here perfect so on ready so on ready we'll check the equipment inventories and for each of them will connect to the signal of each slot, which is item changed. Once an item is changed, we want to update the label. So we'll, the stats will be up to date. And then the player data will connect the changed function. So if we load data, we'll update this too. Because maybe you could save the level of the player or some stats in the player data. So when you load, it's going to be updated too. And when we update, that's it on item changed we set all the, all the whoops i forgot this one on item changed so when the item changed we just set all the labels back to the new stats well we'll recalculate each stats so let's take a look at that uh, well first we need to add it to the scene main uh, let's do stat window duty zoom out player stat window let's add it to the windows node and i'll put that there i forgot in the script of this to make it extend window so now it's going to scale with the rest and then you need to go in the scene and reset the label title so now that's a bit better so i have 380 speed yeah that's good because of the 150 base value plus uh 230 because it's 10 per dexterity so if i remove that and remove this one now i'm at 200 because i have five base dexterity and if i equip it back 350 380 and that's pretty so it's pretty cool and yeah if i find a weapon uh, here i have two damage well it's not going to be showing here because i don't show the damage but yeah you can you can see how that works so here i have a better one. Oh yeah uh, i need to to add a signal on the put item yeah because when you swap the item it didn't change because the item change didn't get called so if i remove it and put it back it's going to be updated but if you swap it it doesn't work so now i have 400 move speed that's a lot all right let's go and take a look at that in the inventory slot when we set the item that's where the item is changed so that's where the item change should be called let's go in the put item that's where we call it so if we call set item we don't need to call it so let's remove it from here and we'll put it below when the item has been set we'll call the item has changed so put item now has new item let's see has new item if we have an item has both item if we have both of them we'll check if we can stack now here we just change the quantity of the item and we don't call the item change so we'll call it emit signal item change the else here will set the item so it, it's going to call the signal in the set item and then we return and let's see if we don't have both item then we just set the item then that's good we don't need to call the signal return null and if we go back up if we don't have a new item we call set item so the signal will be called there 
that should be better start that so if i swap my shield with the crystal orb of gortic the stats change so that's pretty good and yeah i think that's everything for this one now yeah it took me a long time to prepare this video well this part of the tutorial because i wanted to refactor the inventory like i've shown you in the beginning like the leaking of the items i thought about using resources to store the content of the inventories. Yeah, disconnect the UI and data. But it's it's been a bit, a bit harder than I expected, but I learned a lot. So I'm pretty sure I know how to do it now, but I'll keep it for another part. Maybe one part only for that, so I don't mix things up too much. So the next part will probably be dedicated to this refactor, and I'll... Keep, I'll do my best to keep it simple because I, yeah, and I still want to add a few functions to it, like mainly the right click. I want to be able to right click an item and have a little menu, yeah, pop down or something. And it would be like equip, use, uh, drop, or something like that. And you will be able to add those depending on the component that the item have or something like this. Like this rarity upgrade kit could be use or it could have its own name so it could be upgrade and this one would be a drink yeah and if you have anything that you want to propose that you would like me to add to the inventory let me know i'm going to be happy to look at it and try to see how i can add it to it so thanks a lot for watching thanks a lot for my patrons and i'll see you guys next time i guess bye bye